Hello, this is Clara, but you can call me Mother, and welcome to uh, Studio Yutani. I nearly said the wrong podcast because I go on so many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like a new piece of light that's like shining on my face. But anyway, um, basically what's happening with the uh, podcast now, I, I'm a producer, but like there's certain subjects I want to discuss and talk about. And today I've got my good friend Theo Priestley here to talk about NFTs. Uh, which is a bit of a hot button topic at the moment, just because of the way it's really gotten into the news, people selling um, a number of works, 5,000 to be exact, for quite a few million dollars. And we need to kind of discuss about the, the pros and cons of this and, and how it's kind of like changing uh, the marketplace for art, um, for digital ownership, and um, what it could mean for a lot of people who are buying into this hype. So, <laughs> Theo, how are you? What do you I'm think good, about I'm this? good. I'm <laughs> good. Uh, oh, um, where, where do you begin? Um, it, it, it's interesting because uh, as soon as, um, I mean, NFTs have been around for a few years already. Um, so it's nothing new, but I think the recent activities and, and what's happened with Beeple and things like that have kind of sort of thrust it to the fore. And all of a sudden, you know, my timeline on Twitter, for example, I follow quite a few artists and all of a sudden a whole stack of them have just gone in, posted their art, hoping to see the same kind of returns. Um, and then there are other ones who are basically like, oh my God, I'm, I, I've gone back to... Uh, art station or something you know i'm just gonna like quietly do my thing and, and and hope that this kind of blows over i i'm really skeptical at the moment um because i mean i can see the pros and cons we'll go for the cons first because they're really easy to cover um, <laughs> <laughs> um you know i so that you know the, the i think the main one is is that um everyone expects to be a millionaire overnight in a sense. So NFTs are tied to um, blockchain, which are tied to ether as well, um, or Ethereum. Um, and the, the easiest way is, you know, you think Ethereum is actually worth, uh, you know, about a thousand you know, dollars or whatever uh, for one. Um, and, uh, you know, if I price it at two Ethereum, then, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to sell my, my digital art for, you know, a couple of grand. Um, and it's quick money, it's easy money, and I never would have made that before, and it's all digitally authenticated and sits on the blockchain. So, and they... like, for, for people who don't know, like, uh, about, like, blockchain and Bitcoin and stuff like that, would you then be able to go to a bank and get that money out? <laughs> no, you could do it via a wallet. So you have to, there's a whole convoluted process which uh, involves you registering MetaMask, for example, um, to be able to actually uh, put place your digital art on the on the blockchain itself, um, and then it's it's digital currency, so it's not physical in the sense that you know I can you know you pay me via PayPal kind of sort of thing, and it suddenly sits in my bank account. You have a digital um, a wallet uh, uh, that um, or a crypto wallet that has di uh, different um, cryptocurrencies registered to it. Um, Ethereum being one, Bitcoin, the most famous one of all that everyone seems to follow. Um, and that's what you'll be paid. And then, of course, you can convert that into fiat currency, which will be whichever currency that you, you know, uh, that you sort of try, uh, buy and sell things normally um, uh, in your country. Dollar, in my case, pounds, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but when it comes down to it, what I've seen, which has been really interesting, is that an artist will sell something for, say, 500 pounds or $500, um, which would be, you know, 0.5 um, Ethereum. Um, now you've sold that on to someone. And so say you, you sell something to me, um, I become the owner of that piece of art, but I don't want to own this piece of art. I just want to sell it for, for more money. So essentially what you've done is you've sold a piece of art and you've thought, yeah, I made mean $500 and I could make a big hype of it. You know, if I've got, you know, I'm one of these influencers or whatever, and I can make a big hype of this this piece of art that I've now bought and it is now mine, and I make twenty thousand dollars selling it on to someone else. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it starts to look very much like a pyramid scheme, 
where you actually are the lowest common denominator and you get the lowest amount of money. Um, and then the, the ownership of the asset just gets keeps getting transferred and transferred for mm. ever increasing sums of money. And eventually you lose out, but it's, the, it's always the people at the top of the chain that win. Now, I, just before I lose my train of thought, because I know we're going to go over the cons, uh, some NFT marketplace actually build into the blockchain that the artist gets a 10% cut of every sale from now on into infinity. Um, yeah. it, isn't that good for artists? Like sometimes you, you're right, like we just get that end sale. Um, and, you know, that happens in the art world. If someone does a painting a couple of years down the track, um, that artist becomes famous, that piece of art can sell for like thousands or millions or whatever as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's, let, let's, let's try and sort of ground some reality in this. 99% of the people who are selling stuff will never either sell it or will not actually make a lot of money out of it. Um, and that's just a simple fact that, you know, artists are struggling everywhere. They get taken for a ride because people are always saying, oh, well, you're only drawing some stuff. Why can't you do it for free? And I'll offer you exposure. Um, and, the, you know, uh, yeah, I can pay my... Should, they should start a Bitcoin called exposure. Yeah, exposure dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> let me pay my rent and exposure. Um, and... And it's all, you know, in, in this case, and it's always the same, and it's the same with Bitcoin as well, is that it is the um, top 1% who are driving the market and the rest of them are, uh, rest of us are just kind of sort of sitting there hoping that one day we'll get a slice of this action. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, you know, I see every, you know, and the more people that are rushing into it, thinking that they're going to get a big cash windfall, the more saturated the market becomes and the more lost your art becomes before it was ever there in the first place. Yeah. And I guess like to a certain degree, like at least when I purchase art, it's a very personal thing. Um, and I, I really like most of my art is alien art. I must agree. Yeah. Um, like for example, <laughs> <laughs> I found this artist on Tumblr and, yep. um, and then I found him on Twitter. And then I bought the art of him. So, which is like, a, cool. sorry, it's all blinking out, but it's uh, amazing. I will just turn off my background for just a sec so people can see this lovely piece of art. Um, but yeah, so this is an art piece by Adam Gorham and right. it's beautiful. And I wanted to support him. I saw his art and I was like, I, I need that. And I would like to support him. So, so buying the art, was very personal and, and, and sometimes I feel especially with um, NFTs is that people are just buying willy-nilly <laughs> like they're not really yeah. like does the art really speak to them like I'm not not criticizing NFT artists like that as a movement is it's really interesting to me because like I really loved um the data and surrealism and a lot of the artwork that's coming out of um digital art is is kind of like trending on that in that space mm. like the very um controversial stuff uh i saw one of um luke skywalker being stabbed in the back by c-3po and then c-3po pulling the finger and then jumping out of uh the ship of where they were so like i would never ever see an artist do that <laughs> outside of the nft space and it's so weird and controversial but like it's it's kind of funny <laughs> and it's cool and yeah. i remember it i think that, that there's also the fact that um there's nothing stopping me from taking a screenshot if i like if i like something and because it's being listed on a website you can you know click right click save as and you might not have the highest resolution version at of all, but at the same time, you can still own a copy of it. And and if you don't care about the ownership aspect, what you know, why why do you need to pay? Um, you know, uh, art theft is rife, and it, NFTs aren't going to stop it. I mean, we've actually seen, um, and what is it called? People um, are minting their friends' artwork. Yeah, or, or they're yeah. stealing artwork off Pinterest or. Art station or deviant art and um, minting all these works and making money of other people's hard work, which is very sad. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that and I've seen a few artists kind of saying, 
hang on, I I drew this. This is mine, and someone else has basically, like you say, minted it um, and claimed it, you know, as as there and started selling it on. So, you know, now you're having p artists having to really step up um, and where this thing was supposed to protect their their work and their authenticity and you know and tie them to the, you know as the actual owner of the original piece of work now they're having to struggle and say well actually someone else has stolen it and now i'm doing the hard work and in, in issuing like takedown notices and uh, copyright infringement and things like that so the the movement in terms of empowering the artist is is actually forcing them to on the back foot and actually forcing them to be a bit more proactive in protecting their stuff rather than this thing was supposed to help them in the first place now um, i've seen a lot of um artists get taken advantage of one of the um brands that take advantage of artists uh, is black milk and i'm actually wearing one of their dresses <laughs> now they steal artwork <laughs> from websites digital art then apply it to prints maybe change like it 15% because I believe like that's the percentage in the art world that it can, um, makes it into a new piece of art. And then right. they put it onto a clothing and they mass produce it and they sell it on to everybody. Uh, you know, it's NFT kind of feels like it's the same sort of give, except there's none of that artistic integrity where they're changing at least 15%. Um, do you think that maybe because like the space is, and the trend is moving so fast the courts really can't keep up like we all know copy debt copyright and takedown notices like me as a youtuber i had to uh, commission alex white to make a new music piece for me I had to commission other people doing a video mix for me to be able to like put that at the beginning of my podcast because all of my videos were constantly being taken down or challenged yeah. um like do you think that there could be that level of protection for like the smaller artists or do you think this is all going to end up being something for the big corporates to kind of take advantage of and squash us <laughs> uh, um, i don't think um i think at the moment it's a bit of a wild west um i think the explosion of nfts just literally in the last month um is going to cause so many issues um it might call i think it would it might harm the movement more than do some good because once people realize that, you know, other people have been taken for a ride, um, I'm not actually selling anything, someone's stolen my work and they're making money, um, they might actually see this as being detrimental to art artists. Um, and you'll see a lot of people jumping on the bad wagon. You've seen, what is it, Kings of Leon saying, oh, we're going to mint an album and, and sell it as an NFT. And it's just like, why? It's going to be on Spotify. I don't care about owning an album anymore. Nobody cares about ownership. This is the other thing as well, is like some some parts of it has become so commoditized that nobody actually cares about the ownership angle anymore. You know, I don't care about owning an album because I can rent it free on, on Spotify. I'd pay someone else. Um, you know, I'm paying a subscription to Spotify. They pay the artists or so they claim. Um, and, and, you know, and I get to listen to it and I never have to own anything anymore. Mm. Um, and so we have this kind of sort of weird situation where NFTs, is being touted as something positive and it gives people the chance to own digital art and claim ownership and it's you know it's got a stake um on the blockchain and it's and, you know and it's you know it's proven and at the same time you've got this other movement by the corporates to say oh you don't need to own anything just pay us a subscription and you can have whatever you want a smorgasbord of music art telly entertainment you know take your pick just pay us fifteen dollars a month instead of fifteen thousand for a piece of art. So yeah, you know it's 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 yeah, there's, it's a bit weird at the moment. It's a wild west, um, and then you've got the whole the whole um, uh, side of the coin in terms of the minting pro the, the minting process itself and yeah, the, the environment. Uh, it, the impact on the environment yeah yeah now like when i saw some people do the math on how much it would cost for them to mint their work and that's why they don't want to join the nft uh movement uh i can totally understand that but like then at the same time you've got people who like i'm a jeweler and i know that my work impacts the environment there's mining there's you know diamonds there's gold there's silver like all of that 
can cause like severe problems across the world and and gold is mm. like you know it's it's a it's a greed trade nothing good comes from it yet i'm still doing it i have to feed my family it's a, a process yeah. of work that i enjoy doing it's my art um how is that any different from someone minting a piece of digital art like what's how can we weigh up that impact um why is one better than the other um, that, that's actually a good point. Um, it does raise uh, raise some some interesting questions. I think from a you know from a from from your craft point of view, you're quite removed in a sense from the process itself. So the process has happened, and you're taking the end results of that process and then making something new. What happens with NFTs, I guess, is that you're making something new. And then you are part of the process in terms of the minting. So, you know, you have a very conscious decision to be part of that process and to actually initiate the process in itself. Whereas you as a, as, as a jeweler, as a crafter, um, you're taking the proceeds of that in a sense. It's not, you're not the initiator of, of the actual process itself in a sense. Mm. Um, so you're benefiting from the process whereas a digital artist is actually taking part and actually causing the process or initiating the process in terms of the environmental harm um, and things like that. And I think, you know, I, and I think that's, that's touching a lot of artists at the moment as well. So a lot of artists have withdrawn from this whole sort of argument because of that, in a sense, and they're saying, well, I'm going to stick to ArtStation. I'll stick to my own website. You know, I'll promote my own work. You can buy it direct from me, but I'm not going to, you know, sit here, have my, you know, however many GPUs whirring away in the background, um, and, you know, and, and the minting process that takes place as well. And then, you know, the, the electricity consumption of a small continent, <laughs> just, you know, just to, uh, just to, um, you know, just to mint my 18 megabyte piece of art. So it's, yeah. it's... I think that like, that there were some, uh, uh, blockchain companies that were trying to be greener um, and unfortunately you know they weren't sustainable and like maybe mm. that's what we're looking at we're looking at a, something that is unsustainable do you think in future if people actually took artist ownership and copyright seriously that there could be a more environmentally friendlier way and a better way of doing all of this? Um, it's difficult to say because of the state of the internet as it is. I mean, you you share a piece of art or you share a, a piece of music or whatever on, on one social media platform and probably within five minutes, it's on Reddit, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, it's shared in groups, it's shared on WhatsApp. Someone else from WhatsApp will stick it on their Twitter feed. And it just becomes impossible almost to govern um, because of that whole network effect. And it just becomes a snowball and a runaway. Um, and telling people that what they do when they do that denigrates the artist's work for a start. So, I mean, you, when you share something on, on, when you share an image on Twitter, the compression, you know, they compress the image. So it becomes, a, you know, a tenth of what the actual quality was. And then someone copies, right, co you know, right, right clicks, copies that, shares it to someone else and that compression again. So eventually that great piece of artwork has been shared about 10, 15, 20 times. And it looks an absolute mess because of the compression algorithms for a start. Yeah, um, uh, that's why uh, I, I usually right click an image and you can do a Google search, a backwards search on a yeah. Google browser and you can find the highest definition one. And usually that is the original artist that has posted yeah. it. And usually that's how I find people who've done the art because like people can also, you know, write their signature over other people's art and say, oh yeah, I did it. I see it all the time in all of the alien groups or the sci-fi groups. It's like, oh yeah, I drew this. And I'm like, that looks like Tristan Jones's work. <laughs> 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 you, you can't pass that off as yours. Like I understand that he he was started out as a fan artist, but now he's official, and you can't get away with that. And uh, yeah, yeah. What's uh, do you think that 
people will be able to like do you think that this industry will just keep going because like some people is does it say it's a, like a quick rise and fall like you said like it's not stable you linked me to a tweet and a guy had actually gone back and checked a lot of uh, <clears throat> stuff on the nifty marketplace and a lot of stuff mm -hmm. there's broken links there's there's things that can't be traced back uh do you think the scam is starting to show itself now i think as as it becomes extremely popular um and it it, it it's you know that thrust into the limelight also allows people to take a bit more scrutiny about it and that tweet that i linked you to was really interesting and the guy literally dug his way through the the hash um and the um and where it sits on block on, on the on the ethereum chain um where it sits on the server itself and and basically the the actual ownership aspect and the authenticity and everything else like that it just doesn't exist it's it's you know you've you've paid money to own something and claim ownership of that thing and because it's a digital piece of art it just sits on a server somewhere and, one, and once that server goes, so does your investment. How do you actually take that a digital piece, you know, and then say, oh, this is mine and I'm going to, I can't lock it away in a vault. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't say I'm going to save this for the prosperity of my children to sell in 10 years time because the NFT marketplace might not exist in 10 years time. Or there might be something brand new that actually springs up and it's incompatible. So what you've spent 10,000 dollars on for example might be worthless in a year or two's time now some of these people who are buying pieces of art and spending ridiculous amounts of money they're ridiculously rich <laughs> and i personally don't find any problem with ridiculously rich people letting go of their money for artists <laughs> yeah um but like you said you know like the stability of the market and things like that. Uh, there are some artists out there who are trying to kind of combat that feeling of like in a couple of years time, this may be useless. So people are uh, minting their art piece, but also selling their physical piece of art and mailing it out to the original buyer, which will encourage people to be the first buyer, I guess, because like they will then have something tangible to show for yeah. their purchase. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, that's quite interesting. I mean imagine minting your first minting a comic i mean i've got you know umpteen comics around here and some of these are actually signed pieces by either the artist or the writer um and you know i've got stan lee signed copy in here and you know if stan lee said i'm gonna mint mint me a, a spider-man comic you know god rest his soul he's no longer here but you know i'm gonna mint me a, a spider-man comic um, and I own that comic on a digital format, it doesn't have the same value to me as a physical piece that actually has a signature on it. Now, if he said, I'm going to mint this and the buyer will also get a physical copy and I will sign that copy, I would be, well, okay, I, I can see the value in that. You know, I'll maybe read the digital copy because I don't, you know, you could read it a thousand times and it's never going to degrade, but I'll stick the, uh, the physical copy in a, you know, in a sleeve with an acetate backing, seal it up and never actually touch it. Yeah. And then I would probably sell that and probably make more money out of that eventually at one day, or that would be more valuable than the digital piece. Because again, you could probably lose the digital piece a lot quicker than you will of the physical copy. Yeah. I mean, people have lost their wallets with uh, Bitcoin in them. Yeah. Or their, you know, their, uh, you know, the their, their hard their, their drive. And it has... yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or, the, or yeah. the head of like, um, the uh like so i know one of like the founders of like a certain type of bitcoin he had passed away and never gave his password to anyone and all of that money is just gone no one can access it you know um uh, people could say the same of like being banks being robbed houses being burnt down and people losing their belongings and stuff like that uh what's what's the humanity's obsession with possession you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just another form. And the other thing, it goes back to the first point I made as well, is that, you know, you, you, you were saying, you know, extremely rich people are paying loads and loads of money um, for bits of art. Um, 
but of course they've got a you know they've got a, a an agenda themselves and in, in this fact that they if you know they have to see this market evolve to get the return on their investment which is why they're paying large amounts of money to actually kickstart it and to make it a big hype and stuff like that because i very much doubt that that guy's going to ever see a penny out of his 60 million that he paid for five thousand little picture postcards on a digital piece <laughs> You know, I you know, I I just find that I I don't know. Like you say, it's their money; they can do whatever they want. But yeah, I just I've, find that I've really reposted people's stuff on Twitter, and I can still do that. You know, um, I oh credit, exactly, yeah, yeah. I credit him as the artist. I'm a, a big fan of his, but nothing stops me from being able to like grab his art and then post it elsewhere. And that'll be the same for anyone else who owns five thousand days of his art. <laughs> well, the, yeah, I mean. You can't, you know, no one owns. Uh, it's, just, it's it's weird because when you think about, you know, um, you know, art like the Mona Lisa or you know the sunflowers or things like that, there's only one copy, um, and the rest of it is all art prints that you can buy online or you can take a copy on on a Google search and stuff like that. And this is pretty much the same thing. Mm. Um, someone paid a lot of money for sunflowers or whatever. It hangs on their wall, even though it's in, you know, we use that as a loose example, but, you know, you pay however much, 30 million for sunflowers and it hangs on your wall, but everyone else has got the 50p copy that they got out of the art print shop. Yeah. Um, you know, or they took a copy online and then sent it off to Vista print or something like that, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and got it for a couple of quid on a poster format. You know, it, it's, and that's what, that's all it's worth to them. Um, and this is no different. Someone paid the ultimate price for people's work, but no one else is going to pay that kind of money. No. <laughs> if I had that I much money, wouldn't. I wouldn't mind employing him for the rest of his life to make art for me. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I also think, you know, you know, art is subjective, and you might, you, I do think that this guy paid an awful lot of money um, for this because it was an NFT. I don't think it's got anything to do with the art itself, you know. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think if people had his artwork and it's like someone can buy all of my work for this much money, uh, or like all of my work, just make an offer, it would be crickets. I really yeah. don't think anyone would have made that bigger move. You're no. right. Um, um, so they all have a vested <laughs> interest in trying to make it work. And then when you look at the grand scheme of things as well, 60 million is an awful lot of money that could do an awful lot of good in the world. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think people would be the type of guy who would try to do a lot of good. And that's another thing. Like, uh, what are the types of people that we will be empowering? Like, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I, I know it's another hot button topic. This, this morning, I'd been um, reading an article about the director of um, Colorado Space. And apparently right. he, he completely beat the shit out of somebody. If he had minted his movie and someone had bought it, um, you know, the, the action of being able to like watch something or like dispose of something to not support an artist, uh, I think it's important as well. And I think, I don't know, it's not, not quite book burning, but I don't want bad people to really get something out of something like this. <laughs> We can't stop that from happening. No, I mean, it's the same with Bitcoin. I mean, the only, uh, you know, the I think the, the people who got in early are obviously multimillionaires or billionaires now, and the majority of them um, control the price of Bitcoin, um, the buying and the selling. <laughs> Elon Musk, when he said, oh, Bitcoin seems a bit high. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um you know, buy Dogecoin and, and all that kind of sort of thing. But, you know, if you look at the um, the people who they really do control the price of, of Bitcoin. It's, and when Bitcoin first came out, it was like, oh, it's decentralized. It's, um, you know, it's a digital currency. It's for everyone. You know, get rid of the banks. Don't need the banks. This is this is the future of money. This is going to empower everybody who gets it. And now you think, well, who's going to get it? Because it's, it's worth 60000 dollars or whatever it broke the sixty thousand mark recently and it's like that's not going to help you or me or the guy in the street that's not going to empower them because they can't access it 
you know, um, so who is this money for? Of course, it's the people who control it, and it's people with the the, the real money, which is the capitalists and the the VCs and everything else who poured money into it to make it work in the first place. So it's it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's another vehicle to give the 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 the, the plebs like us uh, a glimpse of what of what our future could be like if we had invested early in them. But it, uh, ultimately, we're, we're still downtrodden. Yeah, I remember when Bitcoin was <clears> worth $5 <throat> and I was like, uh, why would I buy something for $5 when I could just have money here? <laughs> and now look, I could have had a lot of money. <laughs> um, but yeah, at, at the end of the day, I, I think what really bothers me is the environmental cost. Mm. Um, like, I've, I've been thinking about it a lot because I like, uh, I'm an agent for a couple of different artists and um, one of my artists does physical paintings and you know she's a lovely person and she had talked about minting her work because like she had been very protective of her work there's no digital copies of her work online that she doesn't allow everything is all physical or mm -hmm. uh, physical photographs there's no digital versions but she's like I finally feel comfortable about putting my work online if there can be a digital watermark for it so that if you know so people recognize that work it's mine and it's my ownership is still there um hopefully this breeds innovation for other types of digital watermarks that don't have to exist on the blockchain do you think that technology exists now and can it be done um, oh, um, I think you could do it with an algorithm for sure. Um, I mean, well, you look at the takedown notices that you get on YouTube, for example. It's just basically, it's not someone sitting there listening to every track on YouTube and then going, oh, I heard that one before. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's an algorithm. It's like, you know, um, and so there should be an algorithm that basically looks for art. Um, and whenever an image is shared, and they should know that the the image was you know taken or owned or created by someone else. Um, and every time it is used commercially, um, it, it, you know auto, there's an automatic takedown notice, um, or there's a, a, a process initiated with lawyers and things like that, um, and it alerts the artist. Um, I mean, if it if the and you don't need blockchain to do that. There's no blockchain behind the YouTube video or behind the music in a, that you use in a YouTube video, for example. And yet we're, you're still able to track the usage in terms of, um, you know, you're not legally, uh, you can't legally use that piece of music. Use something else, please, um, or mm. pay for it. Yeah. So prove that you've paid for it in, in a sense. So you don't need blockchain for that. So we don't <laughs> need blockchain to protect art either. Yeah. I guess at the end of the day, we'll see what's going to happen with this whole kerfuffle. <laughs> it's, it sounds so silly. I, I, I avoided um, Bitcoin traders or anyone like that, like the plague. Like I, I, I hate it. If Bitcoin is in people's bio, it's mm. like I just avoid them or block them. But now <laughs> all of my, like not all of my art friends, some of my art friends are like, Full on NFTers pushing uh, everyone to buy their art and NFT in their bio. And I'm like, I don't want to block my friends. <laughs> it's hard. It's very hard. Um, like, I want to support them. You know, I support artists. That's why I still buy work. But at the same time, like, where do I draw the line? They, they actively do stuff against the environment, but then, you know, in my line of work, I actively do stuff against the environment too. And it's just, it's difficult. It's a difficult conversation to have. <laughs> and maybe that's why so many of them opted not to be on this discussion. It's only you and me, Theo. I didn't invite a, a bunch of other artists. Um, but, you know, they're still new in the space as well. Some have opted for it and some haven't. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's very contentious um, in the art community. And it's very... It is very polarized to the point that there's there's no fence in a sense. No one's sitting on the fence. You're either one way or the other. It's not. Oh, I'll see how it goes. It's literally. I'm going to put everything on NFTs and I'm going to make a shit ton of money and see you later. 
And then there's the other ones who are just like, I just want no part of this. Um, I can see the environmental damage or I can see that there's a bit of a weird pyramid scheme thing going on here and it's harming artists, it's not empowering us. So, you know, and it's just tech technology having its, uh, you know, uh, running rampant in another industry in a sense um, with no thought of, uh, you know, the artists at all, really. Um, so. I think what worries me is that there will be a type of movement where art will become uh, limited in a sense, kind of like the high art world is now. There are some art pieces that have never seen the light of day. There's only a word description. Um, could that happen with like TV shows, movies, you know, certain pieces of art in future where people will have digital ownership and then decide to not share it with anyone? Um, would that become a thing? Uh... I think part of it is boasting, isn't it? Well, the ownership part aspect, yeah. I mean, um, in order for that to happen, there can only be one copy that is available and it's never been released at all. You know, like you say, it's, it's just a word description. So that to me is true ownership of art in a sense. You know, um, so if people's, people's piece of um, pe people, that like people's piece, of art was suddenly removed after it was sold all trace of it was removed um, and that person owned the one true copy um, then that would make sense um, as a as, you know as a as a as a movement to protect the artist um, and the same way that if you spent 50 million or whatever on sunflowers or the mona lisa or whatever you know, you would hang it on your wall and that's the only copy and no one else will ever see it, you know, unless you want to charge people to come around your house and see it kind of thing. <laughs> but the fact is that that people's piece of art is everywhere, even though it's not the, the one true original copy that's maybe the highest res ever, you know, there's loads of it everywhere. You know, websites have got it because they were reported on it. People have probably shared it a hundred million times on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pin Pinterest, Facebook. LinkedIn, all that kind of sort of thing, right clicked and saved it for as a desktop. How can you claim ownership of something that everybody has access to? Mm. This is a problem, I think. Yeah. On the other side of the coin, um, there have been some positives. <laughs> There's um, <laughs> Pussy Riot have minted uh, and sold it and raised, I think, 29,000 for um, women's shelters, mm -hmm. from uh, shelters for domestic abuse victims. Do you think that one evil can equal out, like cancel out another? <laughs> um if it's a oh, well you know i i'm i can't say that, that, that that's not a good cause because that is a good cause um and i wish it had raised up a lot more than twenty nine thousand. um and th th there's there's a thing in itself people's art 60 million versus twenty nine thousand for domestic shelter why you know that guy could have just given the domestic shelters or, or that kind of um, charity 60 million instead um but no he's got five thousand picture postcards for his money um yeah there's you know there's charitable work to be done and if that can help charity in some way um or good causes in some way then yeah uh, it's a lesser of two evils in a sense mm -hmm. you know how do you how do you weigh up the environmental impact and the, and and what was what was the cost what was the true cost of that album you know at the end of the day twenty nine thousand isn't a lot of money but the hours put in to actually produce the uh, the album, the work put in to actually create the lyrics and the music behind it, and then you have the minting process as well, which obviously is the the more environmental uh, problem behind it. Add all of that up, and it's probably I don't know ten times what what someone paid for it. Was that a good return? No. Um, was it worth it? Probably not in terms of the effort. Was it worth it for the charity? Absolutely. So it's yeah bit of a weird one there 
Yeah, every year um, my local uh, university or secondary college where I learnt how to make jewellery, um, all of the graduates make pieces and then we auction it off and the money goes back into the school because, you know, the school needs funding and the government keeps cutting the funding. So we need to <laughs> find a way to yeah. um, help educate a new generation. Uh, I guess maybe there needs to be like, there needs to be something put in place. There has to be rules. You're right. It's a bit of a wild west right now. Um, there needs to be some sort of accountability for the environment because we already see the lack of accountability uh, in my country where white goods aren't recovered properly. Um, we still get bottles and plastic and there's mm. like masks everywhere, people discarding them. I would like to see a bit of accountability for that. <laughs> <laughs> People's art being stolen, like to me, it, it, it does suck. But at the end of the day, I think uh, the entire world suffering and choking under all of the pollution that we're generating, I think is a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, I think because it's tied to, you know, your computer in a sense. Um, and you, 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 you don't have that visibility of impact. You know, because it's electricity, you consume electricity anyway, and it's off the grid. So you don't get that, you know, um, you know, that, that visibility, um, you know, when you drive a car and it pollutes, you, you, you damn well know that it's a polluting car because, you know, if it's diesel, it's spilling out black smoke out of the exhaust. You know, if you have a high, a, a big engine, you know, you're consuming a lot of petrol, you're going quite fast, there's, you know, there's fumes and, and that's well known. I think with Bitcoin, with minting, the minting process, with the, the whole blockchain aspect, it's still a bit of a um, an, an invisible cost in a sense. Yeah, I you saw know, someone, artists, you, yeah. I saw someone had um, hooked up uh, one of those um, turbine fans and also um, a solar panel or six right. <laughs> to, to this shipping container and they like pan around the shipping container and open the door and it's just a, a giant server farm and they're like this right. is my minting process and it's just it it's disturbing like it's it's cool in a cyberpunk sort of way but it's also yeah. really horrible in the sense that like if it wasn't wind and solar power that was powering that it would definitely be coming off um you know coal-fired power plants and nuclear power yeah. and however else we power everything. I hope uh, Elon Musk has <laughs> some sort of alternative power hidden up his sleeve with all his, his batteries. <laughs> <laughs> and all this blasting off into space can't be very good for the environment either. <laughs> no, no one ever talks about that part. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I think I still would like to stick to physical drawings. I, I enjoy the updates from my friends making digital art. And, and some of the stuff is like very avant-garde. It's very different. I right. like that, but I don't like the cost. That's yeah. That's something I definitely can't reconcile. So well, no, the, no investment you from you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to invest in any, I mean, I've, I've commissioned art. Uh, before you know for for game projects and things like that and uh, you know i've got a piece uh, i've got a piece of digital art that i own because i paid for it on my um uh, screen and uh, i've got a, a a canvas version on the on the wall there um and to me that's you know i paid for the art and that's how i'm enjoying it i don't feel the need to buy it and I know that it's sitting on the blockchain and I'm the only one owning it, you know, that owns a copy kind of sort of thing. I, I just don't feel the need, you know, I pay, you know, I paid the artist and he, you know, he received the money, he drew the art for me. I really liked it. And, you know, that's our transaction. Um, and I own it because nobody else has that because I commissioned it. If you want to own a piece of art, go commission it instead. You know, um, I just find it, yeah, I find the NFT thing is a bit of a, uh, it's, a, 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 it's it's using technology for the sake of it. It doesn't solve a problem. This is the, this I think this ultimately, this is the problem. It doesn't solve one. 
it's like blockchain. Blockchain doesn't solve a problem in itself. Um, you know, you know, there are lots of companies out there claiming that it's uh, you know they can replace databases and and, and things like that with blockchain uh, and authenticity and land registries and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's not actually solving any problem at all. Yeah. It's just another layer of technology for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. And this is what NFTs are right now. Yeah. Hopefully there'll be something in future, maybe some sort of artist union and an algorithm that can be used to register people's music, movies, pictures, games. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Would be nice. Having yeah. said that though, um, the first time I played Super Mario was on something called an emulator where someone had <laughs> no. stolen the sprites <laughs> and created an alternative version of Super Mario with slightly different colors, different enemies, right. but it's essentially the same game. It's, it's going to be around for a long time, I think. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with or without NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for uh, having this chat with me. It's been interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, anytime. I mean, I love these kind of sort of debates. Um, you know, I am not an NFT expert, and I'm pretty sure it shows, but I have opinions about these kind of things. So, you know, I follow the tech trends, and I'm extremely cynical these days about what I see. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of converted technology evangelist where I used to, you know, talk um, and extol all the positives about it. Uh, about various technology trends, but when you peel back the veneer, there is very little substance. It, you know, it is a bit like the um, well, emperor's new clothes in a sense. Mm -hmm. And NFTs just remind me of that so much. That's very Black Mirror of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, even even real life has actually surpassed Black Mirror now. It's probably why we haven't seen a new series for a long time because yeah, uh, the creators said um, that reality is just too depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, that concludes our discussion for today. And uh, Theo, you should uh, spruik your book while you're here. <laughs> I wasn't going to, but yeah, of course. I'll, Do yeah, it. okay. So I have a. I've got a book coming out called The uh, The Future Starts Now. Um, it's written by me and 18 other uh, futurists. It's available um, from Amazon, from Waterstones, from uh, Barnes & Noble, loads of other booksellers uh, online and physical um, out on April the 15th, but you can pre-order a copy now. How do I get a signed copy? <laughs> oh, just give me your address. I'll send you one, don't worry. <laughs> And I won't even mint the process either. You know. <laughs> right, we're saving saving the environment by doing that. Exactly. <laughs> Except for the trees that died for the book, but that's another thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, let's not go down that path. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. And um, we'll see you next time. This is Mother signing off. <laughs>